Boxing Lowdown and I'm back here with another video. Now don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Feel free to drop a comment if you like and I'll happily get back to you. Now, uh, who is the best fighter in the world pound for pound today in your opinion? That is going to be the topic of this video today. I saw that The Ring magazine released their updated pound for pound rankings a couple of days ago. And for me personally, I don't know about anybody else, but for me, I like to go by The Ring magazine's ratings. I think that they're the more consistent with what I believe in. And I don't necessarily mean that I agree with everybody on their pound for pound list, like in terms of the ranking, but in terms of consistency and how they uh, judge their criteria, I tend to go by the ring. I mean, there are plenty of other publications and you know websites and uh, journalists that produce their own pound for pound list. I mean, ESPN have got one, uh, Sky Sports have got their own, Box Rec do theirs. But for me personally, I like to go by the ring magazines, just how they judge theirs. And yeah, a couple of days ago, they released their updated rankings and um, a bit of movement in there with regards to who is number one, number two, number three, number four. And when I had a look at it, I saw that Canelo was number one. I believe he used to be Lomachenko, but he's been pushed down now to number two. Then you've got uh, now Anoue is number three. And uh, number four is Terence Crawford. Number five, Alexander Usyk. Then number six, you've got Errol Spence. Number seven, Gennady Golovkin. And you've also got like Manny Pacquiao in there, amazingly at 41 years old. Uh, but Terbiev is in there. So uh, yeah, I tend to go by the Ring Magazine's uh, pound for pound rankings. But this video really is just to kind of ask you, what is your pound for pound list? Like who do you guys rate as the number one? Uh, a lot of people like to include heavyweights in there. For me personally, I don't. Now that's not um, the disrespect to any heavyweights out there, but the pound for pound list originally was created to um, exclude the heavyweights. You know, it was more to give recognition for fighters in the lower weight classes back in the days of Sugar Ray Robinson and, and those fighters. You know, the heavyweights back then were the creme de la creme. I mean, they still are right now, aren't they? But back then, I mean, if you were the heavyweight champion of the world, it meant so much. So I think with Sugar Ray Robinson, the pound for pound list was created then to kind of give the smaller guys recognition for what they do. So um, yeah, I mean, over the years it's evolved and people tend to create their own list. I remember I was looking at some list and somebody said, oh, why is Tyson Fury not in there? Uh, that, that particular reason, it was probably that. So um, yeah, that was the Rings Magazine's pound for pound list anyway. And I just wanna gauge your thoughts on, you know, who do you guys think number one is right now? Do you agree with the Ring having Canelo as number one? Now, when you look at Canelo's resume, when you look at who he's for, when you look at his skill set, you know, when you look at you know, his overall body of work, his fundamentals, everything, I mean, it's hard to argue with him being at number one. I mean, you could easily put Lomachenko in there, I suppose. You could easily put Crawford in there. You could easily put, you know, there are other guys you can put in there and you can make a strong argument as being the number one pound for pound. With Canelo though, I mean, there's always going to be that slight question mark over him, considering that he tested positive for Clem Buterol back in, what, 2018, I believe it was now. And uh, that's always going to be a grey area with some particular people when they do their list. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, he's cheating. You know, I mean, I know that um, he's going to say it was an accident or whatever, like when he tested positive for the tainted meat. But that's just always going to leave a little grey area for those who, you know, decide should he be number one or not. But nevertheless, the Ring magazine have held him as number one. And um, I mean, we could only really go by the fights that he, you know, wasn't tested positive for. So, I mean, when you look at his body of work, it is incredible. And, you know, you look at Canelo's skill set, you look at his fundamentals, you look at his overall body of work, you look at the sort of things he's done in the ring, the fighters that he's fought, the way how he's beaten them. Like, look how he beat Kovalev last time out. You look at, you know, him moving up throughout the weight divisions. You know, he started off as a light middleweight, Canelo boxed all the way as high as light heavyweight. Now, if you want to talk about pound for pound, that's literally what it means. Like, going between the weight classes and defeating the top fighters in each weight class. Uh, he defeated Triple G at middleweight. Um, he's probably going to be fighting at super middleweight in his next fight. He's fought at super middleweight before. He's picked up world titles or some sort of title in each of those weight classes. So, I mean, Canelo does have a strong case for being in the top, you know, top one, top two, top three, pound for pound. Same goes with Vasily Lomachenko. I mean, his body of work is um, amazing. You know, when you go back to his amateur career, what he achieved there. I mean, I know that doesn't have an effect on the pound for pound list in terms of his professional career, but his body of work as an amateur kind of led him to where he is as a pro, you know, getting a world title fight in his second fight. Um, you know, being able to move throughout the weight divisions as early as he has and picked up world titles in those, defeating the likes of Guillermo Rigondeaux and Nicholas Waters and, 
Gary Russell Jr., all these top fighters in under 20 fights. So when you look at that and you look at how skilled Lomachenko is, you look at how good he is, you know, like how hard to beat he is, you, you understand why he's in that list as well, as high as he is. But I mean, it's really just down to debate and it is just like a, a topic for boxing fans like us to discuss. But um, I'm curious to hear what you guys think is your, who you think is your number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Terence Crawford, in my opinion, should definitely be up there. I mean, he's a, a multiple weight world champion now. He um, was unified champion at light welterweight. Now he's got a strap at welterweight and uh, he's looked impressive along the way. Now at Anue, he's a free weight world champion, uh, won the World Boxing Super Series tournament. He moved above Terence Crawford in the ring's uh, latest pound for pound rankings. And then you've got Alexander Usyk, you know, he was undisputed champion at Cruiserweight. Now he's moved up to heavyweight. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how he develops and, you know, where he gets to in his, his career. So uh, Tyson Fury, like I said, he's one that wasn't on the rings pound for pound list. But as I said, they don't include heavyweights on there. So, um, yeah, I mean, where would you have Tyson Fury if you do include heavyweights on there? But, yeah, it's very interesting. And like I said, it is really just down to debate as to what you think. But... If you want to talk to me like as to what I think should go in a pound for pound list, it definitely should be those factors I listed earlier. Those on being your resume, I think that that should be held into account. The fighters that you've beaten, you know, how good you've looked as in beating them. Uh, in terms of like your skill set, I think that should be uh, a, a vital factor in terms of pound for pound list. Uh, how hard to beat are you? That is one of the main things for me. Like how hard, will you, how difficult is it to beat this guy in the ring? I remember when Roy Jones Jr. back in the 90s, it just looked impossible to defeat him. And that was a vital criteria for me when judging a pound for pound list. That's why we called him Superman back in the day, because he just seemed impossible to beat. Uh, he had everything. I mean, he had skills, he had athleticism. He was like the most, he had more gifted athletic ability than any other fighter I know Roy Jones Jr. did. And um, back then, yeah, he was widely recognized as the number one pound for pound for a long time. And then he moved up from light heavyweight all the way up to uh, heavyweight to defeat John Ruiz. And um, I mean, he started his career off at light, light middleweight. So that just goes to show like, how good Roy Jones Jr. was back in the day. That kind of defined what pound for pound is for me. And uh, the fighters that have moved throughout the weight divisions like Anawa Inoue or Terence Crawford or Vasil Lomachenko or Canelo Alvarez, there's a reason why these guys are so high up in a pound for pound list. And I think that that is one of the criteria you need to use to judge them. So, um, I want to get your opinions as to who you think is the best fighter in the world, pound for pound, man. Drop it in the comment section below. Uh, for me, personally, right now, I think you've got a strong case for making Canelo in there. The way how he dispatched of Kovalev recently uh, for the WBO light heavyweight title was very impressive. And um, just have a look at his resume. Have a look at some of the fighters that he's beaten, man. Uh, Shane Mosley, he's defeating Triple G. He's defeating, like I said, Kovalev. Um, he's defeating Eris Landy Lara. He's defeating Austin Trout. You know, he's only lost to Mayover in his career and he's been out there for quite a while now, Canelo. So um, in terms of everything, his body of work is, I guess it's kind of hard to argue that spot. But there are definitely other fighters that are worthy of being uh, spoke about, such as Vasil Lomachenko or Terence Crawford and uh, now Anoue and Alexander Usyk. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts on it anyway, man. I mean, um, there's also Artur Baterbiev in there, Manny Pacquiao in there, Gennady Golovkin still in there. So, um, yeah, Estrada's still in there as well. So uh, let me know what your pound for pound list is, who you have as number one and why. I'll be curious to hear your opinions and your criteria as to, you know, what you judge as the perfect pound for pound list. So drop them all in the comment section below, guys, and I'll be back with another video tomorrow. What's happening, guys? It's Boxing Lowdown here. Click the link in my bio and check out some of our brand new t-shirts, which have just been restocked. We have white, yellow, red and black all going for the low price of £15. Thank you guys again for tuning in and I'll make sure to catch you on the next video.